Boom! Greetings all! Last Outrider here. Welcome to part four of the Blade of Sanguinius. Fire and Blood. Commander Dante and Chief Librarian Mephistion led the assault upon Asphodex. In the sprawling ruin of Fodia, a single spaceport remained in Imperial hands. The rest of the world-covering city given over almost completely to the Tyranids. Like the Spear of Sanguinius, the Blood Angels descended upon the port and plunged into the heart of the Halian Horde. Prometheum Dawn. The hangar deck of the Blade of Vengeance rang to the sound of hundreds of Ceramite boots as the Blood Angels prepared to descend upon Fodia, the principal city of Asphodex. Resplendent in his golden armor, and flanked by a majestic phalanx of sanguinary guard, Commander Dante surveyed his companies, preparing for war. Squads of battle brothers clad in crimson power armor were strapping themselves into drop pods, whilst others thundered up the ramps of their Thunderhawk and Storm Raven assault craft. On one side of the vast hangar, a line of blood angels knelt in prayer before a chaplain, their armor painted black to acknowledge their place within the death company. Predators, rhinos, and land raiders were being loaded onto the huge orbital dropships, whilst tech marines and clutches of servitors blessed their machine spirits. Beyond the massing Space Marine strike force, the graceful glowing arc of Asphodex loomed large through the shimmering void shields of the battle barge. Its darkened clouds were stained a vile purple by Tyranid spores. And even from this extreme range, Dante could see shoals of bio-creatures as they swam through the murky upper atmosphere. Taking his place aboard the Storm Raven Spear of Baal, the chapter master gave the order to attack. Like a bolt of crimson lightning, the Blood Angels crashed down through the upper atmosphere of Asphodex. All around them, the void and sky burned as the guns of the Space Marine fleet cleared the way. Gargantuan lance turrets cast bolts of searing light across the vacuum, each beam vaporizing thousands of Tyranid bio-beasts and bursting apart living, bloated vessels. Salvos of melta-missiles and frag-bombs streaked down ahead of the Space Marines, erupting amongst the ruined city below in showers of twisted steel and mangled alien flesh. As the Spear of Baal broke through the upper clouds, it was pelted with frigid rain and tiny spores that writhed and slithered across the Storm Raven's canopy. Dante cast his gaze across the night-cloaked city below, glimpsing fires raging out of control through its ruined streets, and the flashes of explosions as the orbital barrage cleared a landing zone. Free of the Xenos-shrouded ionosphere, Vox transmissions began to filter in, Static garbled pleas for help, or cries of despair drifting up from the city's defenders. Gesturing to his pilot, Dante directed the Storm Raven towards the strongest of these signals. Rising up over the horizon, Port Helos came into view. The largest of Fodia's many spaceports, and the last one still in Imperial hands. As the Spear of Baal roared over the city, Dante saw 
why the port had held out for so long. The defenders had built a ring of barricades between the port and the city, and then flooded the streets between them with millions of gallons of Prometheum fuel. The wall of flame from this moat of liquid rose almost 100 meters into the sky. For a moment, Dante wondered why the defenders had not made their own escape. But as his transport banked sharply over the port, he could see its landing pads stood empty. The last shuttles must have fled into orbit long ago. Despite the formidable, formidable barrier erected by the Photians, the alien swarm was massing upon all sides, and as the commander watched, he could see places where the flames burned lower than others. It would only be a matter of time before a breach was made, and then Port Helios would fall. Dante stepped upon the edge of the Storm Raven's assault ramp, his sanguinary guard wordlessly forming up behind him, as the seals broke and the portal yawned open, rain and smoke washed into the transport, accompanied by the sharp smell of burning Prometheum and the vile alien stench of the Tyranids. Without another word, Dante took two long strides and hurled himself out into space. At his back, a wing of golden-armored go blood angels followed, and scores more leapt from thunderhawks and storm ravens holding tight formation behind the Spear of Baal. Far below, the feeder beasts and weapon creatures of the swarm craned their heads upwards, alien eyes reflecting the angelic host as it descended on golden jump packs. As they watched, the blood angel's shimmering armor caught the first rays of the weak Photian dawn. And next part, we'll have Photia in flames and Dante's avenging host. Until then, bye.